It's well known that Tesla hasn't spent a whole lot of money over the years on advertising, choosing instead to make use of positive recommendations of its existing customers to get people behind the wheel of a new car. And to help encourage owners to evangelize about its products, Tesla has operated a referral program for years designed to reward owners who recommend the brand to friends, family and co-workers, as well as reward those coming to the brand. Order a Tesla product using a referral code and you'll get money off or a perk not available without the code, and the person whose code you used also gets a free perk, from the chance to win a new car or Tesla energy product to free supercharging or discounts off Tesla accessories. But now Tesla's referral program has come to an end for all but its Tesla solar roof program, meaning that Tesla customers will not be able to earn points or perks for recommending Tesla to other people. While many Tesla customers cite the referral program as one of their favorite reasons to recommend the brand, that referral program has cost Tesla a lot of money of late, and with Tesla sales figures continuing to soar, it really doesn't need the program anymore. As the Volkswagen AG Group continues to execute on its plans to shift away from internal combustion engine vehicles and towards plug-ins, there's been some question as to what part plug-in hybrids will play across the various Volkswagen Group brands in the near and mid-term future. Right now, most brands have some plug-in hybrids offered alongside all electric ones, including Škoda. But now the Czech brand that joined VAG back in 2000 has now stated that it will not focus on making any more plug-in hybrid models after the current plug-in hybrid Octavia and Superb models have reached end of life. Noting that plug-in hybrids are currently important for some fleet operators, especially those whose driving routes and thus charging opportunities are unpredictable, Škoda CEO Thomas Schaffer has confirmed that he believes Škoda's future will be all electric. Right now, its electric vehicles are based on the same MEB platform as many other VAG electric models, but in the future, it, like its sister brands, will benefit from Volkswagen's next generation platform, including the Volkswagen Unified Cell Design, Structural Battery Pack, and choice of three different cell chemistries, each optimized for different vehicle designs ranging from low cost and long range to high performance and rapid charging. With so much EV tech to look forward to, it's no wonder that plug-in hybrids are getting done. Dumped. Chinese company Build Your Dreams, BYD for short, has enjoyed quite a varied history. Having started as a battery manufacturer 26 years ago, it entered into the automotive market in 2002 when it acquired Qishan Automobile Company Limited. Its early vehicles, internal combustion engine cars whose designs were basically copycats of vehicles from Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, Ford and others, drew a lot of attention from the West for their lack of uniqueness. And when I drove an early BYD E6 electric car 12 years ago in the UK at a media event, I was less than impressed with the vehicle's performance, calling its oh-so-slow acceleration on a hill downright dangerous and worse than a G-Wiz. In the last 10 years, BYD has really changed, switching from making clones to designing and building its own highly competent and extremely competitive electric cars. Its vehicles are now selling extremely well in China, as well as the company expanding to all new blade lithium iron phosphate battery production. It's readying itself for a European launch, not to mention massive battery partnerships with other OEMs to boot. Now we've learned that it's getting ready to end production of its internal combustion engine models, with the F3 due to enter production next month. It's a good reminder to judge companies based on their current work and not their past rep. Honda, just like Toyota, has never been all that enthusiastic about EVs, choosing instead to focus on hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles instead. And while it's produced very competent electric cars in the past, the all-electric Honda Fit EV comes to mind, it's reluctant to go all-electric as a brand has been palpable. Recently, we've seen that cold towards EVs ease somewhat. While it's still been more heavily focused on hydrogen fuel cells than some of its competitors, it has admitted that its future lineup must include electric vehicles in order to remain relevant. In some parts of the world, including Europe, the diminutive and also stylish Honda EV has been on sale for some time. In North America, Honda has something else planned, a range of all-electric models that it says will help it achieve a total of a half million EVs sold by 2030. Today, we got to hear that planned production target for the first of these, the Honda Prologue SUV, which will be built for Honda by GM on top of GM's Ultium platform. The annual production target, 70,000 vehicles per year. That would have been okay 10 years ago, but honestly, that's only a tiny percentage of the 4.4 million cars Honda made globally last year. Hmm. Unless you've been under a rock for, oh, the last two decades, you'll know that Toyota is not very keen on the idea of making large numbers of electric cars. Aside from the short bromance with Elon Musk and Tesla that saw Toyota invest in the then-fledgling company and use Tesla to engineer its second-generation RAV4 EV, Toyota and its associated brands have done everything they can to make EVs look so boring and unreliable. Despite its best attempts, Toyota has watched as the rest of the auto industry has embraced EVs to some extent, but company CEO Toyota is still on the anti-EV track 
Ukraine, warning the Japanese government this week that going all electric could cost five and a half million jobs, eight million units of lost vehicle output by 2030, and dogs and cats living together with plenty of mass hysteria thrown in. Okay, I added the Ghostbusters paraphrasing, but in all seriousness, Toyota says Japan's goal of going carbon neutral picks the wrong enemy. Internal combustion engines when it should be targeting carbon dioxide. I'm not entirely sure what Mr. Toyota was smoking when he said it, but the last time I checked, internal combustion and CO2 went together as much as the terror dogs go with Goza. And if you don't get my reference, I'm old and you are way too young. This past year, Tesla has dramatically increased the number of photovoltaic installations it's carried out, with Tesla Solar Roof and Tesla Power becoming a popular go-to for Tesla fans wanting the ultimate trifecta of car, energy generation, and on-site battery backup. But in March this year, Tesla caused a stir when it added a new roof complexity calculation to its solar installation quotes, dramatically increasing the cost of getting its solar roof tiles. Moreover, it added that new calculation to the signed contracts of solar roof customers still waiting for an install date, leaving them with a major dilemma – find the extra money or cancel their solar roof dreams. Since the cost was doubled for some installations, many Tesla customers felt cheated and decided to take legal action. These cases ultimately made it to the court as a class action, but now Tesla has apparently agreed to honour its original solar roof quotes to those who'd signed contracts before the roof complexity calculation was added. In a note to the court, Tesla has communicated it will honour the original pre-price increase quotes. Plaintiffs have 30 days to decide if they're happy with a resolution before legal action could be ended, but I'm doubtful that everyone will take Tesla up on its change of heart, especially given the months of legal wranglings involved. The UK Department of Transport is the UK governmental agency responsible for covering all things related to transportation in the UK, and that includes the roads of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, as well as the vehicles that travel on them. It's a department of transport that helps shape the UK's goals of becoming zero emission in the future and help promote EVs and public charging infrastructure, and it's played a part in setting up a total ban on the sale of new internal combustion engine vehicles by 2030. But just as a recent UK climate change advisor spouted some pretty old BS about electric cars as the reason she personally wouldn't drive one, the Department of Transportation's fleet, some 1,234 vehicles, are mostly diesel-powered. 54% of the fleet is diesel, 5% is powered by petrol, and 29% plug-in hybrids. 9% were mild hybrids with stop-and-go technology, and only 3% were fully electric, meaning the very governmental agency responsible for encouraging people to dump the pump hasn't dumped the pump itself. The whole thing is not only hypocritical, but it also shows that electrification is an effort that requires hard work from all sides. It certainly shows that the DFT could do a whole lot better.